Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love in our eyes. May now your love sweep this nation. Cause us, O oh Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding of neighborly love that is real. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love in our eyes. May now your love sweep this nation. Cause us, O oh Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding of neighborly love that is real. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Good evening. It is Friday evening again, and here we are. Uh, I always like to smile as I begin worship, but today I was smiling because literally about 10 seconds before I began, my whole camera stand just fell apart. So we're, we're here and I hope you kind of don't fall off the stand at some point. It's been a busy week. I personally had three days of mission council and then yesterday was my father's funeral. Thank you so much for the continued prayers. They are very, very much appreciated. We were able to give him a fitting tribute, including a drive-by through the village that he hasn't lived in for four years, but in which over 30 people gathered to show their respects, which was rather lovely. We've heard lots of stories of people whose lives he's impacted, and we're pleased he was able to give to so much to so many beyond the family. Tonight, I sit here with you, uh, feeling quite tired but pleased that it has been a week in which I was able to do my best. So our psalm for tonight, for Friday night, is Psalm 86, verses 1 to 12. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant, for I put my trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of trouble I'll call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this evening continues in Jeremiah. We have Jeremiah 23, 1 to 8. Tonight's reading contains a lot of the phrase, thus um, said the Lord. Classic, absolute classic prophetic material. Wherever we hear this, we hear prophecy. So let us listen for the word of God in scripture. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. 
and I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall fear, they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety, and this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. Therefore the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when it shall no longer be said, as the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel up out of the land of Egypt. But as the Lord lives who brought out and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the land of the north and out of all the lands where he had driven them, then they shall live in their own land. Thanks be to God. Our evening song of humility from Hosea 6, 1 to 6. Come, let us return to the Lord who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind our wounds. After two days he will revive us and on the third day will raise us up that we may live in his presence. Let us humble ourselves. Let us strive to know our God, whose justice dawns like the morning star its dawning is as sure as the sunrise. God's justice will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Jacob? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire, and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading this evening, the text from John perplexed the Jews in the synagogue. So much of scripture on initial reading can actually perplex us too. And when it does, Maybe we just need to sit more lightly with it than try to explain it and sit with it and focus on the love of God brought in Christ, learning from Christ's life about living the love that enables us to flourish and sitting more lightly with the bits that we don't really understand or we struggle with. So let us listen for the word of God in John six fifty two. To 59. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is true fo food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I mentioned last week that I'd forgotten to print something out from Richard Raw, And uh, I want to share with you uh, one of the daily meditations that I receive. Every morning I receive a daily meditation from the Centre for Action and Contemplation. Very carefully named. We hear scripture but actually it calls us to do something about it after we've heard it. I'd like to share this with you, and it, I feel it follows on from a few weeks ago when I um, talked about how often it's easier to give to others than to give to ourselves, how often it's easier to love others than it is to deeply love ourselves. So this is entitled the Loving the True You, 
from Richard Raw's Daily Meditation, Wednesday the 17th of March. And it's an extract from Bishop Michael Curry with Sarah Grace from um, Love is the Way, Holding on to Hope in Troubling Times. I very much enjoyed my time with Bishop Michael Curry, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, when we worked together on the Reclaiming Jesus project and when I had dinner at his house in New York City. He reminds us why we must accept God's love for us before we can love another. He says, I've come to see that the call of God, the love that bids us welcome, is always a call to become the true you. Not a doormat, the true you. Not an imitation of someone else, the true you. Someone made in the image of God, deserving of and receiving love. There is a Jewish proverb, before every person there marches an angel proclaiming, Behold the image of God. Unselfish, sacrificial living isn't about ignoring or denying or destroying yourself. It's about discovering your true self, the self that looks like God and living life from that grounding. Many people are familiar with a part of Jesus' summary of the law of Moses. You shall love your neighbour as you love yourself. Yourself. Loving the self is a required balance. If we fail that, we fail our neighbour too. To love your neighbour is to relate to them as someone made in the image of God. And it is to relate to yourself as someone made in the image of God. It's God, up, down and all around. And God is love. Sometimes we can only recognise God's love for us through the love we receive from another person whom God has also loved well. The important part is that the flow of love gets started. Bishop Curry continues, the ability to love yourself is, is intimately related to your capacity to love others. The challenge is creating a life that allows you to fulfil both needs. I've seen it happen enough, I've seen it happen enough times to be confident in saying it. Perhaps loving others saves us from the confusion, the frustration and ultimately the neuroses that comes when we try to centre the world around ourselves. Or perhaps it allows us to step outside the self enough to see ourselves with some distance for a better perspective on what's missing. Or maybe when loving ourselves is hard, Practicing loving others strengthens the muscle enough to turn the force inward. Love is a commitment to seek the good and to work for the good and welfare of others. It doesn't stop at our front door or our neighbourhood, our religion or race or our states or your country's border. This, there is one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth as the hymn goes. It often calls us to step outside of what we thought our boundaries were or what others expect of us. It calls for us to sacrifice, not because doing so feels good, but because it's the right thing to do. God's love is everywhere, in all things, and that includes you and me. Our New Testament song, from 1 Peter 2. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted in God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die in sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We come now to our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious God and Father, come and dispel the darkness from our hearts, that in the radiance of your brightness we may know you, the one unfading light, glorious in all eternity. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in our crucified Redeemer, 
we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. I invite you to pause for a moment as we consider what is it that you are thankful for this day and this week and whose love are you going to give thanks for this evening. I give thanks tonight for all those who have messaged me, uh, called me, told me they're praying for me and, and have shown me uh, the love that is totally and utterly overwhelming this week. Loving God, we give you thanks for who you are and who you are through the people who love us, who, alongside whom we walk and who nurture and enable us each and every day. Thank you for the blessings of beauty, for daffodils, for blossom, for sunshine and rain. Thank you for all the ways that we can see you through the beauty of creation and through the wonder of relationships. And so, Lord, we come now with our prayers for those whom we love, those whom we have worries and concerns for, and those who we may never meet. In the love of God, let us complete our evening sacrifice of praise. For the unity and peace of the Holy Church of God throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. We hold before God this evening the United Reformed Church, the decisions made at Mission Council for all those who lead in our churches and in the United Reformed Church, for Synod moderators, for our Synod moderator, for all ministers who serve in the United Reformed Church and particularly in the churches in the East Midlands and in the churches in Nottinghamshire. We give thanks for all those who serve, whether helping with our children and young people, whether as treasurers or secretaries or elders, or flower arrangers, or those who are wishing to come back to the coffee rota. We give you thanks for all who serve in your name. For the peace and stability of all peoples and for those in authority, we pray to the Lord. For our own country and its national life and for all who live among us, we pray to the Lord that hearts may be changed and decisions reversed in relation to funding nuclear warheads and to the police bill that will limit freedom to protest. Lord, we pray that voices of wisdom and reason may be heard and that justice may happen. We pray for a blessing on our homes, for our relations and friends and for all whom we love. And we pray particularly tonight for those whom we struggle to love, those who are a thorn in our side. May we find a way to see that they too come to us in your image. We pray for the sick and the suffering and for all who minister to their needs. Tonight we come with our East Midland Synod prayer list for all facing the challenge of COVID-19, all key workers, NHS and care home staff, teachers and school staff, those administering the vaccines and those who are keeping our country going through delivery and shop work. From, am from among those who know the challenge of COVID-19, we pray for two of our ministers and their households still facing the effects of long COVID. The Reverend Samuel Salungwi and his wife Evelyn and son Lusungu. The Reverend Liz Adams, her husband Jay, daughter Chloe and Jay's mum Ellie. And Claire, a mum within the Ark Nursery community at Abbots Road. We pray with Celia for her grandson Alfie and the family. We give thanks for the update that means yesterday Alfie left hospital with portable medication. We give thanks that the, anti the side effects from the antibodies have not been so challenging this time. And we hold him before you and the medical team and his family. May they find moments of joy together, even in the difficult days. We pray with Alison and Jane, Alison and Paul for James, with Adam for his dad, Alan. We give thanks that he is doing very well and we wait with him for his sight to improve. 
We pray with Prince for Cheryl. We give thanks for the improvements, for the good days, for the days when things feel a bit brighter. We pray with Liz. Liz, who gives thanks for this virtual praying community. And we pray with her for her 12-year-old great-nephew, Ryan. We give thanks that Ryan is back home. And we pray that he will gain strength uh, before starting his second round of chemotherapy in three weeks' time. And we hold before God now the Reverend Michael and June Pevy and the Reverend Eric and Joan Allen. And as we think of all of those who sleep in Christ, we pray that Christ will remember them in his heavenly kingdom. We give thanks for the life of my father, Brian, and that we were able to show our respects and tributes to him yesterday at his funeral. As we all turn back to discover our new normality without him, we give thanks for those who have loved us on this journey. And so now we wrap all of our prayers up in the words that Jesus gave us as we say together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us, those we love and those we struggle to love, now and forever. Amen. Go safely into the night and may you find blessing in the days to come. Amen.